What's going on, fishing freaks? Welcome to the latest vlog. We are fishing today. So I'm gonna be fishing around Dallas this week, and then I'm going to be flying out to Florida to do some saltwater fishing. So I'm excited about that, but I'm yet to catch a big, big bass yet this year. Like I'm due for a big one. The lake I'm going to doesn't really have big ones, but I just want one, man. I haven't caught one in a while, I and mean, this is the time of year to do it. So hopefully today will be the day. Quite a few of you were asking about the uh, the, the fishing free cat. Got a limited run of these that I'm gonna put up on uh, lfgfish.com. It's my merch my merch site where you can go uh, pick one of these up. I'm gonna have some more made that uh, I'm gonna change a few things. But this particular one, I've got I've got 20 of these good to go for you guys. So. We'll sell those out and then we'll uh, make a few tweaks and get another one going. Hat feels really good. I had to, uh, it took me a while to actually find this particular hat that had the right camo that I wanted on there. I think it feels pretty good, so I think you guys will like it. So I'll have a link in the description below where you can go check that hat out. Get one if you're an official fishing freak. A cold front is coming in tomorrow, so hopefully the bass are going to be biting today. We're just going to have to deal with some wind in the kayak. That's going to be a little brutal but the bass should be active today. Should be actively feeding. All right, we've made it. Yeah, 61 degrees. It's actually, yeah, 61.67. So that's pretty good. That's not bad. We start out uh, with some moving baits along this windy bank here. I've got, I've got a crankbait, I've got a spinner bait, and I have a finesse jig tied on fish a little bit more when I get in some calmer water but I'm just gonna try to hit some of these points going into these coves right here do the best I can to keep the kayak upright and um, hopefully we can get into some fish we got our first fish on and it is tiny it's a tiny fish so tiny I can't even see it. can't even feel it. Oh my goodness. What a monster. What a monster, folks. Well, definitely not what we're looking for. But, it's a start. Yeah, he smells good. Switched up to a uh, little louder crawfish crank. Got some real serious rattles going on in there. I guess I'm gonna make another cast out here because I kind of hit a flat. Kind of hit a flat with this crankbait and as soon as I hit that flat after being in 16 feet of water, it smacked it, or it didn't smack it. It just, just kind of loaded up. Let's not kid ourselves. We've got a big one on here, folks. Big one on the craw crank. Oh, he's coming up behind me. Oh my gosh, he's got it sideways. This is a big one, seriously. This is a this is a giant fish for out here. Come here, you old bucket mouth. Look at this, look at this fish here, guys. Boom, baby. Look at that toad right there. <laughs> This is, this is a giant for out here, guys. This is a giant. Oh my gosh, look at that pre-spawn fatty. Oh, yes. Yes, guys, yes. God, look at that monster. Look at that, baby. Look at that crawfish crank. Just had it, had it sideways. That's a monster fish. That's probably, that's, pro, that's pushing seven pounds right there, guys seven pounds in a kayak on a windy day got it done baby yes i was not expecting to catch one this big but heck i'll take it this is just one of those giants you dream about catching in the springtime especially out of a kayak so we'll let it go look at that nice fat healthy fish it's ready to lay some eggs see you big mama Look at that slow swim off. Ew, baby. Gotta love it. Oh. All right, let me give you guys the rundown on uh, 
on this bait right here that I was using why I tied it on. So at first I was just using a uh, little square bill like this, kind of a shad pattern. And number one, it wasn't diving very deep. But number two, this crankbait right here, my dad had it in his tackle box a long time ago. We came out here years ago to this lake. It was about this time of year, early March. And he absolutely killed me, caught so many more fish than I did on this lure right here. And it's just a loud, crawfish crankbait and I went and I bought bought a bunch of different ones just the ugliest color ever but those big bass just wanted it it's really loud aggressive rattles early spring is when I usually like to use really loud rattles so that's why I tied that on and I was just cranking it digging it into the rocks right on a point where the fish are staging so this is a little pocket I'm in right here so that bass was staging to come back here and spawn water 60 degrees she set up right there that's why I threw it so loud crankbaits Especially these ugly crawfish colors can be good in rocky lakes that have crawfish this time of year. So if you guys are not throwing them, get you a couple in your tackle box, start throwing, throwing them around in the early spring. I'm gonna work my way back to this point where I just had that fish, but there's some good little buck brush in here. There might be some smaller males that have moved up into this little pocket that are going ahead and setting up. Just looks pretty good. I'm gonna take a spinner bait, run that spinner bait through there see if we can get bit in that stuff. I think for the most part, the fish just have not moved up in the shallows on, on this lake yet. They're not ready. They're more, they're more main lake. Even though the water is, is warm today, I think what they're used to up here is having, having colder conditions and really spawning mid to late March. Versus down where I live, it's, it's like, it's going on right now. It's amazing what, you know, a few hours of distance will do. The fish will really act differently. You gotta take that into account if you're traveling north or south in your state to fish different lakes. If it's warmer in there, traditionally, spawn could be three, you know, two, three weeks ahead of where you're used to fishing or later. There he is. Got him. He was in there. We were right. We were right, guys. Ah, not nearly as big as that last one, but probably one of those males that's moving up. Still a really nice bass. Ah, didn't even need the trailer hook. Got him. Another fat one. Really nice. Actually, you did get the trailer hook. Oh man, you smell sweet. I love it. I love it when a plan comes together, you know, when you predict something's gonna happen, you catch them. Fish is nice, fat, healthy. I would suspect that's one of these males moving up to make these beds out here. So you can see right there, that big female, you know, the ones you really wanna catch, Water 60 degrees are not quite ready yet. If you're catching those males like that size in the shallows and you're not catching any big females, you know you just need to back out to the nearest deep water access point, which would be a, a main lake point or a creek channel, something like that. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're fishing in the spring and the big ones are not shallow, just try to look for the next best thing, the next best deep spot or creek channel or or whatever it is that might be holding the, the bigger females that are staging. I'm at the beginning of this next creek arm and it's much bigger. Actually, th the last one I fished was like just a little pocket. And I like those little pockets in the springtime that are just off the main lake because I think big fish are attracted to them. It's an easy place to get in there, spawn and get out. But this is a much bigger arm. It's got um, not only the main lake points, it's also got the secondary points in here as well. So I got a good feeling about it. I'm gonna cruise down the bank here with the kayak and I'm gonna throw uh, the spinnerbait and the crankbait starting out on one of these main lake points. Work my way back there and see what I can get. Another good one here, boys. Oh, just got him in the stickups. He absolutely hammered. 
that spinner bait. Oh, he's running. He's running. It's a nice one there, guys. Oh, yeah. Nice bass. Ah. There we go. I think I got him. I might have got him on the uh, the trailer hook, and then I got him hooked on the on the main hook when he jumped that first time. I got to the first uh, secondary point inside of this cove. I didn't get anything on the on the main lake point, and uh, the first secondary point I came up to, this guy just slammed it. Nice bass. It's probably uh, two and three quarter pounds, I'd say. Just a really nice bass out here. Super thick. This is when you catch your fattest bass, guys. This is this is the time of year when you do it. Oh, you know I gotta do it, guys. I swear they smell sweeter in a kayak because you gotta work harder for them. That's a good fish right there. All right, see ya. Nope, oh, there it goes, right at the end. Woo, man, I smell like fish. It smells so good, I got the slime on me, got my bass juice going. Feels good, guys. That's uh, that's two really decent, I don't know if they're buck bass or small females, just right on the bank. Then I've had one giant right off the bank. You know, you have you have your main lake points, you got your secondary points, you got your tertiary points, you can just keep going. But usually those bass are on one of those points as you're going in, and it kind of changes as the spring progresses. They go farther and farther back. They start out on the main lake. But that's what you do. You just look for them on those points. This front's really coming in now. I think it's time for me to head in. I wanted to end on a big one, but it was still good. Finally, I caught a big bass in 2017. I've been waiting, going out, waiting for that day where I was gonna actually catch a, a really nice fish, and I did today. That fish was probably about seven pounds, so that's my biggest one of the year so far. So hit the like button for that. And if you don't listen to anything else I say, just listen to this for this time of year make sure to fish in the moment conditions are constantly changing in the spring windy sunny temperature drops it could be hailing it could be sunny in the same day so always fish in the moment don't get too caught up in doing one particular thing I kind of had to remind myself of that today traveling around so much going okay you know I've been catching them like this shallow and the water's warmer and I've really I've enjoyed catching them like that but I know I'm not gonna catch the bigger fish right now on this lake like that. So always keep that in your mind. Always keep the conditions, the time of year, and where you are in your mind when you're making those casts. And this crankbait right here, guys, is it's accounted for a lot of big bass for me this time of year. I only really throw it this time of year. The rest of the time of year, I can't get fish to bite it. But it's really loud, and it's really ugly, and just represents that crawfish pretty well, and it's got a kind of a cool like A-shaped lip on it. I will try to find these and put a link in the description for you so you can check them out. Um, I'm not sure if they're discontinued or not, but if I find them, I'll, I'll put a link so you can go down there and, and check to see if it's in there. But really good crankbait for catching bass in that less than 10 foot range on rocky stained water lakes. So the kayak's the only thing I got up here in Dallas this week. And my buddy Craig, you guys haven't seen Craig in a while, He's up here in Dallas. I'm gonna try to hook up with him and see if we can go on a kayak adventure together. So hopefully that all works out. But it was a good day today, guys. Catching that big bass just felt really good. Overcoming these tough conditions in the kayak, getting that big bass in my hands, it just felt good. So thanks for coming along with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next video.